But can I say, the three that did cook lamb, it was, it was exceptional. Joshua, come on, mate, come up. Rack of lamb, we've got, we're gonna cook that quite simply, hot roasted, and Gary's gonna show us something that's really lovely and, and, <laughs> and it's very close to my heart, and that is the sexiest pom puree, or as we call it in Australia, mashed potato, <laughs> all right? There's two of those babies, and they run down, turn around. <laughs> They run down the back, right? So there's a backbone, that's it. Take a little bit of that fat off. Um, the next stage is to remove a little bit of this connective tissue and chain, what we call a chain. And again, we keep that, okay? And then, see how I've gone round, like that? So you start off on the front and work your way round methodically. Beautiful. Just to finish up with the, uh, the lamb, we don't want the bones to burn, yeah? They're, they're, they're presentation and, and they're quite beautiful. So we just make a little cover. And we cover them up. A little bit of olive oil. Salt. And we start it fat side down, yeah? Okay? Okay, and we get that nice and golden brown. Right, Josh, you want to pop it in? Okay, so mashed potato. And Julie, you did mashed potato. So you, you come up here and you can give us a hand. Now, we've baked these on a bed of salt, all right? Mm -hmm. And the reason we've done that is because it pulls the moisture away from the potato. If you bake that straight on a tray, you end up with this little sort of hard, wet spot where the moisture's trying to go somewhere and doesn't go anywhere. The most important thing here is that the potato is hot and stays hot through the whole process. The moment it cools down, you're gonna end up with gluggy mashed potato, mm -hmm. right? This is what we do, okay? So you have to pay yep. attention. Yep. I'm using this only because it's easy, but this is a drum sieve. <laughs> sieve, drum, because it looks like one, <laughs> all right? So what you're doing is you're putting your weight through your shoulder and you're pushing that through. So you get a very fine riced or sieved potato, and that's crucial. Mm -hmm. And you've got to work fast. See all that steam coming off? You've got to work fast when you do that. Milk, and you need to add a bit of heat to that. All right, so that comes up to the boil. And we're only gonna use butter and milk, no cream, okay? This is the fat's coming from the butter, the flavor's coming from the butter, and we use a good unsalted butter. Gary, I'm about to pop okay. that in the oven. So we got, we got beautiful caramelization there, yeah? See the beautiful colour, and that's just gonna, and then we're gonna continue caramelising that in the oven, that side right. down. Six minutes, and we'll turn them for another right. six. So the oven's at 190 degrees, guys. We'll rest it for half the amount of time we cook it for, okay? So if you cook something for 12 minutes, rest for half the amount of time, which is six minutes. Carve out. Mashed potato, or rice uh, sieved potato, and then we're gonna put the milk around the outside. Right, you're gonna grab that whisk. Just put a little bit of salt in there. And then we're gonna take a little bit of butter. Just a couple. A little bit. <laughs> oh my God. What I want you to do is I want you to use the base of the whisk just to stamp down on the butter, right? Okay. Come on, be a bit. A bit aggressive? Yeah, because what I, want to, what I don't want to do, well, they're not that aggressive. <laughs> What I don't want to do is I, I don't want to, you know, start beating this before I've got an amount of, you know, of the milk and butter in there, right? That's it. And then pop it back on the heat and then start whisking. Question from Poe? Um, that was two potatoes? Three. Three potatoes. Come on. Three potatoes. Three potatoes. And how much butter have you put in so far? Um, well, so far there's about 300 grams. Okay. And then we're going to add a little bit more, because I'm not sure there's enough in there. <laughs> Lamb's out of the oven. We're resting it. Yeah. George, sorry, do you always rest your meat under foil? Yeah, you should rest it in a warm temp in a warm environment. Yeah, it shouldn't be in a cold environment. Okay. Resting it doesn't mean that you. Resting it is basically there, so you're not losing any of, any of its moisture. I'm going to make a quick sauce. All this beautiful little flavour in the bottom of the pan. 
And you know, great restaurants, all those pan juices, they never go into the pot wash, they get used, okay? So a little bit of garlic and simple, don't need to uh, complicate it with lots of different vegetables, blah, blah, blah. Rosemary, that goes in. A little bit of thyme. I've got a little bit of white wine here. So just to glaze that, lifting up all those beautiful little sediments, okay? A little bit of um, veal stock, that splashes in there. And we'll just reduce that down really gently. We make all of our stocks out of chicken bones at, at, at the restaurant. And the chicken wings, because think of it, we love eating chicken wings. They've got the most flavour in it. And if we make a brown stock, we brown the bones. If we're making a white stock, we don't brown the bones. Can you use a red wine? And what white wine is best for lamb? Don't get too confused with... White wine's fantastic because it's, it's light. Red wine, when you reduce it a lot, it goes into this sort of Vegemite state. It tastes like Vegemite. So I've carved the lamb. Nice and rosé, OK? We'll put that one somewhere else. Ooh, George. Okay. Look at that lovely little dollop of mash. And then we've got <laughs> just these green beans we've just tossed through olive oil. Nice and simple. Um, and then some of that pan juice. Moderation, of course. Okay. Oh. Mate. Trevor, come on down. Yeah, you cooked lamb. I did. Yeah, it was, it was delicious, wasn't it? It was like cacciatore. Lamb cacciatore, yeah. yeah. A little George's, bit more George juice is making for you. sure it's got a bit of fat yeah. on it for you. Gotta have a bit of that, like, oh yeah. You see, I knew you'd go for that bit. Mm -hmm. It's the best bit, isn't it? It is. It certainly is the best bit. Yeah. Does that make you happy, Trevor? Mine was better. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's delicious. It's very nice. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. Yours was your lamb. Can I tell you? You cooked that rack of lamb. I remember on the audition. Mm. Absolutely spot on. So my top tips for mash, well, bake. If you're gonna, let's, let's be honest, if you're gonna be extravagant, bake the potatoes on rock salt. Really, really important, okay? Because it's gonna help draw the moisture away from the spud. What you want when you crack that thing open is a nice, steamy, fluffy potato flesh, okay? The next tip, you have gotta keep those potatoes hot. The moment they get off hot, they become cool, they're gonna be gluggy. So you need to sieve them or rice them as quick as you can. A Little bit of milk that's already up to the boil into your pot and start whisking in ice cold butter straight away, okay? Little splash of milk. And you'll end up with perfect mash every time. Lamb, as we saw, lamb rack. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of you guys cooked it in the, um, in the audition tour. French the bones, make sure they're nice and clean. Pop some foil over the bones so they don't burn. Presentation's important. Caramelise the fat. Those of you that did tr taste this one, you'll, the first thing you mentioned was the crispiness, the crunchiness of that lamb fat. Caramelisation in the oven. Don't overcook it. And one of life's little pleasures, mashed potato and gravy. A little chef's treat, mashed potato. Come on, then. Come on. <laughs> Can I see the potatoes in the oven? <laughs>